Welcome back to AuctionProTemplates.com. My name is Ali Barber, and in this tutorial, we're going to be changing and creating the listing page. Okay, we're going to show you how you can add your products and how you can actually get it onto eBay. Now, this is a big tutorial, so let us get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up the listing.html inside of your Notepad++ or whichever program that you're using. You'll notice inside of here we have two. We have listing.html and listing-no-tagbot.html. This is so that if you wanted to list this in a different method than using the one in this tutorial, then you've actually just got the HTML code there and you can change it according to how you wish to. Uh, people often use different types of software, they even use different ways of listing onto eBay. Uh, you have things like a Magento website which you can actually integrate tags with and you can put your listing into the Magento um, system and uh, it'll allow you to list products onto eBay via that way. You've got other eBay tools like Turbo Lister or uh, Orctiva where you can actually, Orctiva is based off a tagging system where you can add tags to your code. So that's the code. This is the listing that you would use is the listing hyphen no hyphen tag dot html for anything else for any other way of listing except for the one we're going to do in this tutorial through tagbot. So as we're using tagbot, let's do listing.html, double click on that. And as you can see, everything's linked up, everything's ready to go because we've done the find and replace. All we're basically going to do is control or command A, control or command C to copy that. And we're going to come back to the browser and we're going to come to this link here. Now this link will be included with the video. You'll be able to see it on the web page that you're watching this video from. It'll be on the auctionprotemplates.com uh, website. So just simply click that link and it will bring you to the online version. There is a downloadable version that you can use. This is for Windows only. And again, I will provide this with the video that comes um, with the page that this, this video is on, okay? Uh, if you're using Mac or any other method or you don't want to download and install anything, just simply come to this link and you can proceed. They're both identical in the process. So what we want to do first is in number one, we basically just want to paste in that code we just copied. So just paste in the code there. Next, scroll down to um, option two and choose make slots. Now, as you'll see here, we've supplied five images that you can have, five product images. And uh, if, for example, that you only had on this product three product images, then you can simply uncheck some boxes and that will allow you just to have three product images. For the whole process that we're doing now, we sort of recommend that you watch this tutorial first so you get an understanding of what we're doing, where it ends up. It'll just make things a lot easier for you instead of sort of flying blind in some ways. So the first thing with the images is you need to make sure you have a direct URL, meaning you need to tell eBay exactly where your images are located on your server. Now, throughout our tutorials, we have had a URL of this, okay? We have auctionprotemplates.com forward slash FTP tut forward slash, then it would be the images and then forward slash the name of the image that would be inside of this folder called images. That's the direct URL to us. When dealing with images, you don't actually have to have them on your server. You could have them on something like Photo Bucket or any other uh, Imgur or any other system that actually gives you a full URL. The reason we uh, recommend you put them on your own server is that it's always more safe to keep them on your server. Things like um, Flickr or anything like that. Maybe things could change or you know your account gets suspended or whatever it may be. This means that the links on your eBay will stop working. So if you have it on a server, it's always safer. So you basically need to give it a direct URL for each, each image. For this example, what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to grab some images from here and I'm just going to drop them inside of my folder here. And I'm just quickly going to upload these to my FTP. Okay, so um, let me just drag these to my FTP and I'm just going to drop them inside of the images folder. This, this way we can actually work with real live images and you can actually see how you change the URL as well. So what I want to do now is I have these four images. These are my product example of my product images. They're called main one, main two, main three, and main four. So I need to put this inside of that tag bot. So I just simply remembering that my images are inside of a folder called images. Okay, inside of that folder images are my images. 
So all I need to do now is inside of the tag bar, I just simply do images forward slash the name of my image, which was main one dot JPG. Just quickly check that main one dot JPG. So that is to link to that image. Now, if you wanted a test and you're not entirely sure if this is the correct URL, what you can do is you can just open up another tab and just simply paste that into the browser. And if the image displays, it means it's the correct URL. If for some reason that the image didn't display, like uh, for example, like this, no, not found, it means that your URL or the location where your image is different than what you're actually stating, okay? So just make sure you have it correct. And if it is correct, it will actually display the image. That's one way that you can actually test out your URL. Now, as I've got four images, I'm going to uncheck. So it allows me four. And I'm just going to paste this code in here to save a bit of time. I'm going to do main two, main three, and main four. So that's my images sorted. The next thing we got here is auction title. So this is going to be my product title. So this is my main, um, main title. Okay. Then we've got a mini description. Like I said, it's best to watch these tutorials so you understand where this goes. But this is basically to the right hand side of the product images. So this is going to be text for mini description. Okay. If I really wanted to, I could actually just add some dummy text in here. Now, if you find that you can't actually see the text, just simply click on the plus sign and this will just allow you to have more text. I've just basically stuck in some lorem ipsum. This is just some fake text. This just allows us to populate the box and be able to see what's what. Now inside of any of these boxes, you can actually add some basic HTML. And I will include some with the link to this video. Uh, things like break tags, which allow you to have like paragraphs between your sentences, okay? You've got things that you can add like bold. You can bold specific text. So for example, let's say I wanted to bold this. I could just stick a B tag and then a closing B tag after that around this text. And that means that when it gets displayed, this text will be bold. The, like I say, I'll include in, in the, uh, on the website, you'll be able to see some other basic HTML elements that you can use just to make allow you to format your text a bit better. Okay, so if you have an understanding of HTML, some basic HTML, that can be added in here as well. If not, you can just use basic text and just paragraph it by using these break tags. Let me just minimize that one. The next thing you got is the main title header. So this is the actual, um, the main description header, which is underneath the actual images. Again, you'll see once we display this. So this is main uh, title header. Next thing you've got main description. I'm just gonna copy this again, just so we got something to work with here. Okay, again, add your basic HTML elements in here. I'm just gonna take the bold out so you can see the difference. Okay, so once you're happy, once you have all that information incorrectly, you would just simply choose make code, and this will send give you the code that you now need to put into eBay. Now, what I like to do is I like to save this code, okay? I like to have multiple uh, text files or HTML files with this code saved. This just means that later on, for example, let's say you want to edit a listing, you don't actually have to go through this process again of actually coming through and making these changes. You could just simply open up the code inside of a, a Notepad++ as an example and make the changes accordingly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. So I'm just going to scroll down. I'm going to select it all and I'm going to copy. You can preview it if you wish to, okay? You can preview it here, and this will give you an overlook of what it looks like. As you can see, we've got some good stuff happening here. We've got a slider effect. Uh, also, you can actually just save it as HTML if you wanted to, and it will save it to your computer. I don't normally do that method. I just like to save it here and then save it myself, okay? So that's how you preview and save. So now we have the code. Now everything's ready to move forward. We're going to show you the way that you can list it via eBay. Now, like I said at the beginning of this tutorial, there are many methods to list on eBay. This just happens to be one of them and uh, just a way of doing it, okay? Uh, there is many tutorials out there for different methods, and later on we'll do some more tutorials explaining some different ways that you can actually use these listing templates and list it with different types of software. But for now, we'll actually just use the bog standard eBay 
um, create your listing um, system. Now to get to that, all you would do is go to the sell button, you would click on sell, and then you would actually choose the category that you want to create, okay? And this is the main eBay categories. It's always good to have a look into this and make sure your product's in the correct category, okay? So for this, let's say example, this is um, jewelry and watches, fine jewelry, fine jewelry sets, and let's say it's a pearl. This is all hypothetical, this is just an example. Uh, just for your information, when you create these categories, it does actually give you a category number on the end one. So instead of actually every time in doing this, you can actually just paste in the category number if you saved it. Okay, and then what you would do is choose continue, and that would take you to the page that looks like this. Again, if you find that you want to edit that category, you can just simply inside of that page, just choose change category, and you'll be able to go through that process we just did a minute ago. The next thing you've got is your store categories, and this is the actual categories that you've created on your eBay store. We've just created some dummy ones because this is a fictitious eBay store, but you would just basically choose what category you would like your product to be in. The maximum is two, but you don't actually have to have two. You can just choose one if you want. I'm just going to choose anything. Next thing you've got is your title, and anytime you see this green asterisk, it, may, it means that these bits of information is needed otherwise when you come to submit it won't allow you so for this we're going to do test of sexy listing okay let's just change that test of sexy listing next thing is we want let's make it new depending on your variations depending on what you've set up and depending on what category you're actually in actually changes this information here so as we're in a jewelry, it displays this type of information, country manufacturers. But if, if you're in a different category, you might find that these actual item specifics actually uh, change, okay? Next thing is you can add your photo. So you can add a picture. Uh, you can add up to 12 images here. It tells you here. All you would do is browse your computer and find the image that you want to add. And then you would just simply upload it. You have other options here that allow you to pay more money and you can get different stuff happening, but you shouldn't really need it. Next thing we got is the main important part is you have a standard button and you have an HTML button. As our code is HTML, you need to make sure that you actually um, paste our code into the HTML tab. Don't put it in the standard, otherwise all it will do is paste in the code and it will just display all code. You basically want to go to the HTML tab, Control or Command V, or you can right click paste, paste that code into there. You can also come back to the standard button if you want and it will display some elements. Now don't be alarmed if you don't see things like top navigation, categories, or even the footer. This is because these are JavaScript files and they don't actually display the JavaScript files in a design view, but they will do on the real thing. Scrolling down, you can choose yourself a visitor counter. You can set up a price. You can also do like quantities. Now be careful if you're a new store, you'll find that you'll have a limit on your account. Normally it's about 100 and anytime you add a quantity that adds one to your limit. So if you had a quantity of 50, it basically means out of that 100 you've already used a quantity of 50. So if you did that two times, you'd only be able to list two products. You can up your limit with eBay. Next things you got is your PayPal stuff. Just make sure that's right. You've also got your shipping. And again, if you're UK, this might be different. But you have a vast amount of shipping options that you can use. Uh, and then you can put the price. You can select if it's free shipping. You can also select uh, multiple. You don't actually have to have one. Okay, you can select multiple types of shipping services. Then you'll need to make sure you have your handling time. Here's your international shipping. Pretty much the same as above. You can also do shipping based off package dimensions, or you can do it based off weight, okay? You'd actually need to make sure that you select the correct uh, option up here where you choose which one to use for that to be able to work. And then underneath here, you have your item location and you have your returns uh, policy. Now, one thing you should be aware is once you set all these up one time, you can actually come in and sell a similar item and all these specifications will be kept the same across all listings unless you choose to change it. Once you're happy with all that, just choose continue. And this will take us to the next page. Uh, it'll give you basically, you can add some more options for imaging. It'll give you a preview of what you've created and then it will tell you how much it will cost underneath. Check this first. If it's in the $2 region, then you need to make sure that you haven't checked something by accident. Normally for a, a .com, it's normally about 10 cents. 
uh, for a .co.uk, I'd imagine again it's in that region. It's it's quite cheap to list. Um, okay, so but if it is like a one pound or one dollar something like that, do check that you haven't accidentally checked something. And once you're happy, you just choose submit revisions. Okay, let's have a look. If we click on the link, and you'll notice here's the normal eBay stuff. Buy it now and stuff. If you had variations, you would have drop down menus here and stuff like that. We're going to scroll down and you'll be able to see that we got our slider working so we can change the actual image. It's got a nice little hover effect over it. The, the, for this, the, uh, the best images are the biggest images you have. You only use to, need to use one size, one big image, and the code will automatically change it for the thumbs and for this part here and for the bit on the right. Okay. You'll notice here is your description. This is that lorem ipsum. You'll also notice here is that uh, bold that we did. You've got links here that should already be linked, okay, because you've already done found and replace. Just simple little things that allow people to add to favorites, tell a friend about it, stuff that's come in handy. Next here is you've got your description. This is that main title header, and here is that text. It has made one break um, here. You'll notice that we added one break tag here. If you wanted to have a bigger space, then you need to add multiple breaks. Where are we? Here we are. And then we've also got some tabs here, which I'll show you in the next tutorial on how to change those. You've also got some related products down here. Again, I will show you how to change those. Again, for the categories, uh, we're using a Java file, which I will show you how to use that, change those. And the same for name of the links. And the footer, again, we will do in a later tutorial. But for now, as you can see, we have, as usual, we have our content in here. We've got our mini description. We've got our main description in here. For the start of things, we are ready to go, move on to the next tutorial, and keep you moving forward. Hope these tutorials have been helpful. Thanks very much.